Hi everyone and welcome to Woburn Golf Club. We've got a glorious sunny evening here and I'm going to play the Dukes course. Now this is going to be all about me playing from tee to green, something you don't always see me do, usually I'm always around the green. This is tee to green, we're going to play, hopefully you'll learn some uh, tips on course management, shot selection and really look at improving your golfing IQ which is what it's all about in terms of lowering your scores. So let's get started. Okay, so I've rushed to the first tee. I've had a busy day teaching and what makes this video hopefully realistic is most of you just rush to the first tee, whether it's first in the morning or whatever. So I haven't had a chance to hit balls, unfortunately. We've got a fabulous par five here to start. There's a little bit of trouble on the right. There's out of bounds down the left. Because I haven't warmed up, I'm not gonna hit my driver. If I do hit a good driver, I can easily get on in two here, but I'm actually gonna hit my four hybrid just to hopefully just hit the fairway keep it in play and avoid a disaster off the first. So let's see how we get on. Nice and low T. I'm going to aim it down the right side. We're very lucky here at Woburn. We've got these beautiful stripes. And I'm, there's a light stripe I'm in here and I'm going to aim straight down that light stripe. Nice smooth swing. That'll do us nicely straight down the middle. Can't reach in two, but we're in play. No disasters with the first shot. Right, that hybrid's done quite well. It's caught the slope, it's run down. It's left me with a difficult decision for the next shot, which I'll get into in a minute. But every time I play the Dukes course, I feel like I'm stepping in the footsteps of so many great players who've won here. Just a quick rundown of some of the winners on this course. You've got Seve's won twice here, Faldo, Woosnam, Lyle, Henrik Stenson, Greg Norman, and Lee Trevino won here in 1985 from just over here. He was near that tree and he hit a fairway wood from there to a foot to win by one. So amazing memories of this, uh, of this hole. This, by the way, was the 18th hole in the British Masters days to create a little bit more drama than a par five. Obviously it's the first hole for us as we play it today. So um, we're going to have a go at this. I, I, I've got 210 yards. So I'm going to have a go at this with my hybrid. I could be really defensive and just hit a 100 yard shot because there's fairway bunkers down there to really take those out of the play. But because my ball has really chased down, I'm going to have a go at this. Okay, and it's slightly downwind as well. So let's go and play it. Right, so it's slightly below my feet. That helps me out a little bit. That's going to help me fade the ball. I've got a little bit too much club in my hand, so a fade would be ideal here. Uh, so we're gonna take this on. Don't need to hit it. Struck it well, but I've pushed that. I think, oh, it's kicked to the right. So I think it's gonna to be towards the pine trees. Uh, if it's gone past the bunker, it won't be too bad a miss, but it's all about the lie now. I mean, it's, uh, it's kicked on some pretty hard, and as I say, it's really hot. It's about 35 degrees today, so it's roasting hot, and the ground is really quite firm, so that's, that could have kicked off into a bit of trouble. Uh, pin's on the left-ish, so maybe I've got a bit of room. Let's see. Okay, the line's not too bad. It's sitting up a little bit, which could go against me. It could pop up a little bit and get caught in the branches. That's the big issue here, how the branches overhang. I'd love to just stand here with my 56 and do a release too, um, and that would be quite an easy up and down for me, but the the big point here is I don't want to hit the branches because that means I'm chipping again. So I've got to control my ball flight, hit it low when I really want to. Um, so I've gone to a 52 to try and keep the ball flight down, but it still allow me to do a soft release and just hopefully keep the flight down enough. It's going to be quick down there, but I've got to land it on the green. If I land it short, it's going to stop. So quite a tricky one on the first hole here. It's going to move right to the left. I think six, eight feet past the hole is not a bad result here. Sit, soft, 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 soft. Sit, yeah, it's run on as expected. But the main thing there is I control the trajectory. Let's keep going, it's gone on, it's gone on maybe 15 feet that. I uh, control the trajectory. Um, sometimes you've just got to really make sure you're not hitting the branch. That would have been a total disaster. I've, I've missed the branches. As a result, it was going to go in lower and run out more. It's caught the slope, but I've got about a 15 foot for birdie. We'll take it. All right, you can see how that's really rolled away there. It's just caught the slope and come down, but at least I know what the break is going back. It's going to be left to right up the hill. It's quite makeable, this one. Just outside left. Make sure it's got enough pace to get there.
Go. Go. Oh, hold it. There we go. What a start. Birdie. So, obviously, not the best short game shot there, but it's run on. Hold the putt. As I said, it was quite makeable. So I had to get enough pace there just to hold the line. Absolutely delighted to make the four. Much better than the start I made on uh, when I played the markers. If you haven't checked that video, check it out. I uh, made bogey there and went on to play actually uh, quite nicely. Maybe that's a, a good omen for today. Can we do it again? Right, what a start there, birdie in the first. So we're on to the second. It's a 363 yard par four. It moves quite viciously right to left. There's a big slope that takes it around the corner, slightly into the wind. I'm going to hit a hybrid. I want to hit this about 200 yards, 210 yards. So I'm going to hit my hybrid again um, and keep it right. I don't want to be going left. If you get left, you're going to get blocked out here. I've gone left many times over the years, so I'm just going to favor the right shot here. Hopefully like that first tee shot I hit. Pretty good, just fading a bit. I mean, it's gone right, but it's absolutely fine. I've missed the fairway, but it's it's fine there. I can see the green. I'd much rather go that side than left. So I had a bit of an anti an anti left swing there, um, just really avoiding that that left miss. But we'll take that, and uh, we're off to a decent start. And by the way, I'm teeing off the yellow blocks today. Why? These are the these are the tees I play off the most when I'm playing my Captain Pro matches here at Woburn. And it's also the tees you're probably going to be using if you ever come and play at Woburn Golf Club as well. So hopefully you get to see the course from here. And um, yeah, I enjoy playing off these tees. And play off the tees you enjoy playing off. Right, got 142 in here, has pushed to the right. Lie's not bad, it's not going to give me quite as much control as I maybe want. The big thing about this green is it's tilted from front to back really quite aggressively so you don't want to go long if you go beyond the pin you have a really quick putt and if you miss a green long you really are in position z so short is better here so in that respect i've got 142 it plays about six or seven downhill so that's making it say 135 i've got my wedge here that goes 135 the lie might make it jump a bit so it might go say 137 so i reckon it's like a three-quarter pitching wedge for me uh even if it comes up a little bit short it's not the end of the world here. I'd rather be short than long, so. A good swing on this. There's a tree in the way, but that's not a problem at all. I'm gonna straight over the top of that. Okay, it's got a little left, it's cutting back. Have a look. Okay, well, oh, it's come up a little bit short, actually, just popped up a little bit. That's about a yard short of the green, but I've missed it in a good spot. Uh, haven't gone long, so I've missed it. It's a safe miss. Let's see if we can get up and down safe par. So it did pop up a bit there. That happens sometimes in the rough when it's sitting in a, in a bit of a spongy lie. You just hit down, it gets too far up the, th the club face and it comes off soft. But as I said, uh, with my shot selection there, I wanted to be short the hole. If you look long, it just drops right off and that would have been a total disaster. So I've missed it in a safe spot. Uh, I could put this, but I would say that there's just a little bit too much fringe to put through here. I have a rule really where if, my, if it's sort of in a, a putter length, I will put from there because that doesn't affect it too much at all. But really, it's gone a little bit too far for that. So I'm not going to use the putter. I'm going to use a pitching wedge because this is quite viciously uphill. And if I use too much loft here, it's going to spin too much. And then I've got to throw it a long way and it just becomes harder to judge. So I really, I want to play a shot with less spin. So I've gone to the pitching wedge, landing it around about halfway. I'll have a little bit of check, but then hopefully it's going to run out a little bit more. A little bit of right to left here. A little release one, chip and run with the pitching wedge. And you see it's got a bit of check and it's just running out. Sit. Oh, it ran on a little bit more there. Got myself a little testing, little four footer down the hill there. Played it nice. Just didn't feel it as well as I should have done, but played it technically well. Got a whole little snaky little downhiller now. Yeah, caught enough for the hole, so that's fine. Left myself a little bit too much to do, but quite, I quite like downhill putts in a way. You just got to get it started, and the, the ball wants to collect into the hole. Uh, but that's fine. On to the third. Now, the third is the signature hole here at Woburn on the Dukes. You're going to love it. Wait till you see this one. Right, so you can see why this is a signature hole here. Really famous par three, probably one of the most famous par threes in the UK, as we have a pheasant walking by as a spectator. We've got 124 yards to the pin. The pin today is right at the back of the green. I think this is 
the toughest pin on this course because if you go long here there's only about two yards past that pin if you go long it's the toughest up and down in the world so i really when i've got a back pin like that and i don't want to go near i'll put a barrier across the green at say 108 so if i hit this further than 108 because that's with the slope by the way it plays about 12 down so it's 124 pin plays 112 if i hit it further than 108 i've made a mistake here so i want to believe myself about a 20 foot uphill putt here so I, what I'm not going to do here is hit a full 52 because it's going to spin way back if I do that with this green because it is so viciously tilted from front to back and right to left. So I'm going to play a little chippy sort of three quarter pitching wedge just to try and control the spin and uh, let it run out a little bit. So I want to hit this around about 100 and, 102, 103 yards through the uh, three quarter wedge. pulled that a little bit but it's it's okay it's on the green yeah just on the green I was a little bit too careful with it understandable with that pin position but I've got around about a 30 foot uphill putt so we'll take that right so beautiful arena down here and the green you get an idea of the slope now hopefully just how vicious this is so my ball's pitched here it's just kicked to the left give myself an uphill putt but you can see if I miss that green long I'm definitely not making a par or it's gonna be very very difficult so we're straight up the hill here. It's not going to break that much uh, because we're up the hill. So I can hit this around about maybe a foot outside left with a bit of speed. And the idea here is just to leave it a foot under the hole, tap in and run to the next. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, I didn't want to do all. Okay, we'll take that, but it's got a foot past the hole. A little slippery one back, but hopefully we can deal with that. On these, keep your head down on these, don't look too early. We roll it in, okay? So it caught the edge. All right, so we've made par on a signature hole, all about pin position. If the pin was at the front, I'd have landed it here and it would screwed it back to the pin. The pin being at the back, it was a lower shot to try and take the spin off, leave myself the uphill putt where I managed to two putt. So we're on to the fourth, great hole coming up, okay? So stroke three par four 366 yards it plays straight up the hill here so although it's only 366 it plays a lot longer it's uphill all the way and uh you've got to get it to the corner if you don't get it to the corner you can't see the green so i'm going to hit the driver here i've probably got a little bit too much if i push it if i hit a draw it'll be perfect so quite an aggressive play here first driver of the day let's see if we can hit that little draw by when when i try and draw the ball I approach it from here as I walk in this way. I don't come in square, right? From fading, I'll come in from here. From drawing it, I'll come in from the side and it helps me sort of see the see the curve. Try that out if you struggle drawing it. All right, so dart down the middle. See if we can shape it. And I have, it's coming back. It's straightened up a bit of the wind. That's down the right side. Yeah, I might have slightly run out of fairway, but absolutely take that. I actually felt like I hit that a little bit out the toe, but dear old Taylor made the QI 10 Max just helped that come back with the, with, the, uh, with the gear effect there on the face, but that was fantastic. So we're okay, we're in shape. Just missed on the right here. The branches aren't too much of a problem. The lie is a bit of an issue because it's really sitting down. There's a lot of grass behind the ball there. I've got 118 yards to the pin. There's a shelf in the greens, a top tier. It looks like it's just on the bottom tier here. So I'd rather be short the pin than going long because that's going to be a really tough putt. So I've got 118, but I'm going to hit a hard sand wedge as opposed to a gap wedge for me because when the ball is sitting down like this, I'd rather be aggressive than, than uh, taking sort of three quarter softer swing, which I'd have to do with a 52. It might come up short. I don't 100% know it's going to come out of this lie, but I'm hoping it's going to come out pretty hot with less spin and it's going to get there. So it's a good committed 56, just straight at the pin. Got a little heavy, go on, big kick. Actually, it's all right. Oh, that could be close. It's hit the mound and pushed it forward. I think it's just short of the pin, but I think we'll have a good look at birdie there. So you can see we've come up short there. Now, that really is the art of course management. You can see this huge tear in the green. So the pin's around about four yards from the beginning of this tier. Now I hit the 56, it's left me about 15 feet short of the hole. I was always struggling to get it there. 
but can you imagine if I'd have hit the 52 and it had come out pretty hot and it's gone up here. Now, I've now got a lightning fast putt, very difficult to, once it gets on that slope, it just takes off. I'm probably gonna get eight, 10 feet past the hole at best, probably gonna three putt. So you can see what I mean about just thinking your way to a better score. Just think about which side of the pin you want to be. Do you want more club or less club? And I think if you could just do that, you are going to shoot lower scores just by just getting more intelligent about where you want to leave the ball. So a fairly flat putt here. Nice look at birdie straight up the hill. Looks like it's just going to move a little bit off the left. I'd say just one ball outside left here. It's a bit like that putt hold on the first really. Just needs a bit of pace to hold its line. I pushed it a bit. Oh, okay. All right, a little bit of tidying up to do. There we go, steady four. Always take a four on that hole. Big lesson there was make sure you leave your ball the right side of the pin for the hole you're playing. Right, par five. It's a dog leg left, lots of terrain changes, huge ravine on the left, which you can run into, which is not good news in there. But it is a good birdie chance as well. It's 500 yards. So if I get a good drive down there, I can get on in two. But a solid start, one of the through four, so pretty pleased with that, but it'd be nice to pick one up here as well. So it's just a, a dead straight tee shot, really. Don't need to do too much with this, but just put a nice swing on it, good rhythm. Yeah, that's about as good as I've got right there. Perfect there, absolutely perfect, good length. Um, I'll have a good look at it from there. Get on in two. Right, so like with that tee shot, really uh, got it out there. I've got 200 in. Obviously the fairways are running a little bit, so I've got to play that into account for the next shot. It feels like the wind's suddenly getting up actually. It's really blowing into me now. And one of the features of this fairway is lots of little humps and bumps. So I've hit a great drive down here, but look, look at the lie I've got. Okay, so I've got one foot really lower than the other. So with this sort of stance, it's going to be hard for me to get through the shot. I'm probably going to turn the ball over a little bit. There's a big tree on the right. Which, which is going to interfere with the sort of shape I'd like to play from this lie. So I'm going to sort of aim this at the pin, and if it turns over into that bunker or I miss it left, it's not the end of the world. Long iron play isn't my forte at all, but anything up there I'm going to be delighted with. Just managing this slope, really. Play a little bit further back in the stance from this lie, aim a little bit right, and I accept it's probably going to hook a little bit. Okay, it's gone to push that actually, it stayed out there. It's hit the it's hit the tee box on the par three, the twelfth, and it's actually gone on the path there. It's actually hit the sleeper. I think it might be pin high. I think it's pin high. I think I've gone past the tree, which is good news for my chip. It looks like I'm gonna have a little drop off the pathway and then I'll be chipping for an eagle. So it's done exactly what I said. I'm pin high, I'm on the path, it's just kicked off the bank here and come down. So obviously I can get a free drop off here. At the nearest point of release, which is here, it's probably going to kick off. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to place it, but you do it twice and then you would place it. And then the ball is back in play. So I'm playing my third shot. Now, this is a tricky up and down. We've got quite thick rough, and then there's about maybe be a yard and a half of, of light rough, where it's, which is almost then the fringe, and then it's uphill around about five, four, four or five yards of green to work with. The, uh, the lie is okay, because I've obviously just placed it, but it's still pretty firm and it's on a bit of a down slope. So a high shot here, and also these branches could come into effect, isn't really a shot here. I'm gonna play a low shot, and I'm gonna try and land it just into the upslope, just short of the green. Take a little bit of speed off it and see if it can just get there, okay? What I don't wanna do is land this in the thick stuff. It could, it could eat it up. So this is, uh, I've gotta be quite precise with this one. So ball outside the back foot. I've got the 56, little release one, hinge release one, a little bit of hinge here just to create a little bit more down onto it to get the strike and keep the flight down. Ooh, we didn't really get the strike, but it's worked out really well. It's done all right. So I landed it in the rough, got it a little bit heavy off this sort of lie, and it actually, it worked more through the rough than I thought it might do there. It's kicked on. Got about eight feet there for a birdie. 
So when you do play the chip shots, it's important to watch the ball. I watched the ball till it finished that. It gave me a free read. So I know this is left to right going back because I watched it move the opposite way to here. Probably 10 feet, eight, 10 feet here. So just outside. Nice to make this for birdie. One ball outside. Break. Oh, we've got it right in the middle. There we go. Moves to two under. So, key there. I had a great tee shot. Five iron was was a good strike. Obviously, because I'm on that slope, it just maybe pushed it a little bit. It didn't turn over as I expected. Got a little bit lucky with the shot, but I controlled the trajectory. I was trying to hit that lower shot, and it helped it sort of continue. And obviously, a really good putt there. So, two under. Here we go. We're on. All right. So, two under par. What a start. Okay. Two under through five. Absolutely delighted with that, but a long way to go and there's going to be some poor shots coming up believe you me um so we're on the sixth hole fantastic par three here two big bunkers there one at the front anything short here will run all the way back down the ravine you'll have a horrible sort of 50 60 yard pitch shot so really the key here is getting it up there it looks like the pins towards the back today it's 167 to the pin and it's slightly into the wind so if there was no wind i'd hit my seven uh, seven nine here i'm going to hit six i'm going to play a little knock down six so just grip down an inch give myself more like a shoulder to shoulder swing let's see if we're going to flatten the flight out and the grip oh, come on turn onto it oh, i've pulled that could be in the bunker, yeah. Oh, it's carried the bunker. It's done all right, actually. That's on the back back left fringe. Wasn't a good swing. To be honest, I've got so many bad memories on this hole, so I'll take that. Uh, that's just back left. It's gonna need a little chip, maybe able to put, but if I take a par on this hole, I'll be delighted. So we'll take that. It's, it's carried the bunker. Six iron was the, was the club. I thought the pin was a bit further on, actually. It's actually a bit more in the middle, uh, but big, Big key there is I got it past the pin. You know, you don't want to be short on this hole. Now, there's quite a lot of left to right on this on this chip. And I think a lot of golfers, when they're playing chips, they don't really respect the break like they should. If they was a putt from here, they'd have a good look at it. So I want to be making sure I'm allowing at least a yard of break here. It is going to move left to right. I'm using a 52. I'm going to do a go with a straightforward chip and run shot here. Lies fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. I uh, landed about halfway on, but just hopefully just like come in towards the hole from the left. A little chip and run, release one with the 52. So I played it nicely. You can see it's breaking to the right for a tap in par. Okay, so nice shot selection there, 52. Any more loft than that, it would have it would have bit up too soon and left me too much to do. A little bit less, it would have got away from me. So 52, the right loft there. Right, so let's tie this one up. There we go. Take a bar on this hole. Now we're onto the seventh. I think it's the toughest par four here on the Duke's course. It's a long hole, big dog leg left. Wish me luck. So the yellow tees are almost on the whites here. We've got 473 yards, par four, stroke one, not surprisingly. Uh, dog leg left, anything left, you're in the bushes. Anything right, you're in the trees and you can't see the green. So this is all about the tee shot, this hole. I can see the 150 post. If I can hit it at that 150 post with five to 10 yards of draw, that is a shot. So I'm trying to paint a positive picture of where I want my ball to go, where I want to start it. Oh, it's gone left. That is probably a lost ball. We'll have a look. We'll have a reload there. Right, so we'll reload. First one's not impossible. It's it's on the line. It's on the, there's a tight line there. It's on that line. Right, okay. Let's try and get the fair way with this one. That's absolutely perfect. What is it about the provisional ball where you always nail it perfectly down the middle? That's exactly what I wanted at the 150 withdraw. So hopefully I'll find the first one. If not, at least I'm in shape with the second. 
Right, so we found it. So it's hit this tree, presumably, and it has come down here. The lie is absolutely atrocious, though, and I've got to try and get this somewhere near the fairway. I've got this tree in front of me with some stakes on, and it's so much grass behind the ball. I've got to use a bit of loft here. I've got a nine iron in my hand because if I'd, I'd love to just get a, a five or six iron on this and just hit it out, but it's going to come in so shallow, it's just going to get caught up from around about here with a five or six. So I've got to use a bit more loft. I'm using a nine, but I'm going to really lean it forward. And hopefully I've got to keep it down as well. So I've got some branches and leaves there. Anything out there would be great, but this is not a good light. I'm going to play it outside the back foot. Loads of hinge, hit down quite aggressively. Hopefully it doesn't hit this tree on the left. Oh, that's all right, that's come out quite well. Sit down, don't go too far. No, that's fine. Okay, so we'll take that. When you're in it low, sometimes you've got to do it with loft when you've got a lie like that. So lots of hinge, hack down, and we're okay, we're back in play. Right, so we've got 183 to the pin. It's going to be 149 to the front of the green. The pin is on the back ledge. There's a huge tear running through this green, and it's just, just on top of that. And then if you go long here, it's a really steep slope, and it's just horrible down there. Uh, there's two bunkers on the right. The whole thing goes right to left up there. So the pin is on the right as well. So this is going to be really tough to get anywhere near the pin. I'd have to really seriously flirt with the bunkers to get it a chance to, to come in. Um, I've got a six iron here because I want to hit it in low to give it a chance of running up. Equally though, I don't think I can get this too close to the pin. I'm going to aim it about five yards right of it, down the grip. I'm just trying to hit a low, low punch of one in there with the six. Ah, oh, pushed it. I've hit it straight in that right-hand bunker. Oh, it's carried it. No, it's in the bunker. Wow, I've now got a 30-yard bunker shot over a ridge to a back pin. That was just a bad swing, got ahead of it, underneath it. Right, I'm going to have to make an unbelievable up and down to say bogey here. Right, I don't think it's hard for me to sort of emphasise just how tough this shot is. It's got a ridge of sand behind it, so it's sitting down and it's above my feet and there's lots of sand in the bunker and I've got a pin position that looks like it's about a yard over a ridge and I've got to hit it about 25, 30 yards. So this is seriously tough. Because of a lie, I'm not gonna be able to throw this too high and get loads of spin. So I can't land this on the top tier because it's going to run from that lie, it's going to run 15 feet past the pin. So and I've got a lip in front of me, wow, this is tough. So I'm gonna sort of try and Play lots of sand here and try and draw it and land it at the bottom and see if it can get up the slope. But listen, I'm not going to have too much uh, expectation for this shot. This is almost like make double and walk away from this hole. Right, ball in the middle, square face, work with the slope, try and draw the bunker shot. So hopefully it's going to run up the slope. Well, I played about as good as I can. Get up the slope, go, get up, sit, sit. No, it's coming back. See, I played that lovely. I played it exactly as I wanted to. I got the draw, got a bit of that forward spin on it. And it's just needed another foot, but it's hit the slope and come back. Two putts for the double. Okay, so see, it got to the top, rolled all the way back down. Up the tier, so it's going to be slow up there. Looks like it's going to go right to left and then left to right. So I'm going to aim a little bit more left to right when it slows down than right to left. So I'm going to aim just left of the hole. Just trying to get my two put here. Wow, I'm having an absolute nightmare here. Okay, so I'm going to have to six, eight foot and have to save double. I gave, I gave that far too much uh, of the, the slope there. That myself. Tricky one here. That's seven feet down the hill. Not a lot in it, though. I can go straight at it. Oh, there we go. God, that was a stressful hole. So, May double bogey, so I'm back to level par. Tough hole for me that, didn't like the tee shot. Um, but anyway, we're back to level, we go again. So we're on to the eighth, so disappointing double on the last. And really, I think if you do have a bad hole, just try and reset. Don't rush, 
don't get too quick go back to a couple of swing thoughts so for me it's making sure i just complete as best as i can nice and smooth in transition so i can then rotate onto it so just important just to breathe you know you've still got a lot around ahead of you you can still get it back but if you'd offered me a level pass standing on the 8 i totally would have taken that so that's my mindset now tough tee shot here again it looks fairly innocuous but you've got a bunker on the right there's lots of wind you could easily and it's back into the wind you could easily flare this off to the right if you miss it left you block so you've got it a good straight tee shot here right good rhythm let's get one back in play so i've pushed it a little bit i put a swing it is towards that bunker it's carried it should be all right we'll have a look so i've just pushed it a little bit Nice rhythm though, please with a swing. Right, so it's carried the bunker. Just left myself a little bit of a problem. I've got a sort of a bare dusty light. I've got to hit it really low. Pins on the right, the trees are blocking it. I've got to hit quite a big fade here, like a low fade. I'm gonna hit at the bunker on the left and see if I can cut it in. I've got 162, I've got my five iron. I've got plenty of club. So I'm gonna open up here to the left. I'm gonna go out like a punch hold off finish main thing is controlling the trajectory don't hit it straight into the branches there at the bunker i think i've played a good one there that's moved around okay yeah that's might be on the green it's it's short right uh it moved all the way around it might be front right of the green so very happy with that they're the sort of shots I'm, I'm kind of pretty good at really kind of feeling shots like that so if i can have a, a covered shot low little hold cut it round they're the shots i enjoy that's why i enjoy woven so much so many trees you've got to move it around the trees so man yeah, just about made the green fringe can't put this but these are the ones i'm trying to make I'm trying to visualize that ball landing and going in the uh, the ground's pretty firm here as i'm having my practice swing i can just feel it is kicking quite a lot you hear it's quite firm and that's why it's important to have a practice swing so you can just do that and feel how the club reacts so with that kick i'm getting as it's hitting the ground that's ruling out more of a release two shot here and it's also i feel like it's going to be um you know pretty quick there as well so i don't want to get too big a bounce that it's going to run on too much there but the big thing then is the lie so it's a bit firm so i'm going to play that a little bit further back in the stance just play a little bit of a low checking one just landing on the green and hopefully I'm going to pop this one in the hole. That's all I'm thinking about. Go on, go in. Oh, what? Play, played it exactly as I wanted to there. It checked, it went in low. I thought I'd hold it, just went right at the end. But it's important to get the mindset. You've got to try and hold it. I was so intent on holding it, I didn't even bring the putter out of the bag. Let's tap that in for the four. And uh, from where I was after that tee shot, we'd uh, totally take that as we move to the next tricky little par three. But I take that. Oh, I can't believe I didn't go in. Still can't believe I didn't go in. But anyway, main thing there is I steadied the ship after a bad hole. Just get a nice solid par under your belt, and off you go again. Right, we're on the ninth here, 154 yards, par three, nice hole. Pin is right in the middle of the green here. I'm going to go with an eight iron. Just see if we go straight at it here. It's pretty good it's just drawing off the pin left pin high sit down sit down no just run out a little bit long left there turned it over a little bit maybe could have turned through the wall a bit more but uh that's okay decent shot i might have to chip again though so yeah it's come a little bit uh, long here just mr green just in the fringe i'm going to chip it not put it it's a little bit long here to put through and there's a shadow of the pin that's really the entry point i like to use the shadows to try and help me read it and see where it's coming in from. So it's gonna come from right to left. So I'm gonna play a low 56 here to give a little bit of check on it and then let it feed in off the right. Again, I'm really trying to think about holding this and seeing where it's popping in the hole from. A little bit of check, hasn't quite broke as much as I want. Okay, so slightly misread that actually, but played it really nicely. About three feet to tidy up the par. All right, let's tidy this one up. Not much in this. 
There we go, got the par. Nice tidy up. Actually slightly misread that, I should have had a look from here. It actually runs away that way a little bit, but hey, played it well. Got up and down, got the par. Really have steadied the ship now. So 10th hole onto the back nine, level par. Be really pleased if I can stay level as we finish, but some really tough holes to come. This is 376 yards, par four. Big sort of crater in the middle of the fairway, so really you can get some awkward lies, but I'm hitting driver to try and be quite aggressive and hit it past that, which will leave me a short, uh, very short iron in. It's lovely dark stripe straight down the tee. I'm gonna visualize my ball going through that tunnel there. Right through it, that's the best of it today. That's gone, carried it. There we go, right. Good chance. I only have about 100 yards in from there. Let's see if we can get a birdie, get back on the par. So we're heading to about nine. I hope you're enjoying the video. Hopefully you're actually understanding the art of course management. You don't have to play amazing golf to shoot low scores at this game. It's about thinking your way around, thinking about where the danger is, making sure you're playing away from it, understanding how the lie affects the shot and really try and visualize the shots you've got. And if you can do that and become a more intelligent golfer, it's amazing what you can do without really improving your technique too much either. So it's all about the mental side of the game, which hopefully this video is helping you with. I, uh, ball's carried the ridge there, so I'm in good shape here. Pins on the right, let's see what we can do. So aggressive with the tee shot, it's paid off. I'm past the big dip there in the middle of the fairway. Downwind, it's 106 yards to the pin. The sprinklers have the yardage to the front. It's gonna be about 86 to the front. Pin is at the back. Right is, is a disaster if you miss it right. So I'm gonna aim about a yard left of the pin. I'm actually gonna hit my 52. I could, I could easily get there with my 56, but it'd be, a, it'd be quite a firm one. And I do have a bit of a golden rule that don't hit full wedge shots unless you really have to. So I'm gonna use my 52 and I'm gonna play like a committed three quarter shot. Hit it in a bit lower and see if I can just skip it and then spin it. And uh, yeah, just a yard left of the pin. Down the grip a little bit, narrow the stance. Three quarter swing, still commit. I oh, just tugged out a little bit. Sit down, sit. Okay, back of the green, might have to chip it. Not a good swing there. I sort of got stuck on it, hand wrapped over and got a little bit of work to do, but it's not too bad there. Yeah, not a good shot that, kind of stalled out on it, hands took over when you close the face on it going to miss it long and left not playing much really hard for me to feel those shots but no excuses let's see if we can make this and get away with a birdie so it's on a down slope lies okay so i need to go fairly wide in the stance here get myself down with the slope more ball back 56 i've got a little low pinchy chip and run i don't think there's much break here i'm gonna go straight at it bit of check that is quick. Okay, so you can see it move that way. That's giving me the read back. It's just outside right, about three and a half feet for the for the save. Right, so yeah, this is one of these putts. It's tricky. We could see it moved quite a bit with the chip. Um, I'm gonna hit this on the right edge at just a nice medium pace and it should fall back into the middle. There we go, got the save. It's really quick at the end there. Not a good wedge shot in, but again, it's never up and down. That's what the short game's there for. It's there to save you. So we're on to the 11th, par five here, 478. Back into the wind, great driving hole here. Tapers in with the trees at the driving distance. Bird of the previous two par fives. So let's see if we can keep that run going. It'd be nice to get on the par again. Bit more room right here than you think. That's perfect. Down the right side of the fairway. Hopefully I can reach in two, let's see. So into the wind, I've still got 231 yards to go here. I could hit the three wood, but I know at the front of the green here, it wants to chase out, it's sort of quite quick there. So I'd equally, you don't want to go long on this green because it's quite a tough chip back. It looks like the pin's near the front. So I'm going to hit a hybrid. I might not be able to reach, but if I can get up there 10, 15 yards short of the green, 
it's, it's a good chance of getting up and down still. I'm going to need to a little bit of a fade. There are some branches there that really cut in on the angle. So really, uh, slightly left is the is the shot here, in case it comes out a bit low and hits those trees. So I'm going to aim at the bunkers on my left and just try and fade it, open the stance up a bit, see if I can get a bit of a cut in here. Like a low cut would be uh, a good flight. Started too straight and cut. I heard it hit a tree there. I think it's hit a tree. We'll go and have a look where that is, try and find it. Um, just started it too straight and got underneath it. Tough up and down here. I mean, it's done all right. It's hit the trees, come down there, but really tough up and down. This is a huge slope here. So anything that's kind of short here and not enough speed, it's going to break right down there towards the bunker. But equally, once you carry this, it is gone. The branches mean I can't go in the air, so I've got to hit a low flighted shot just onto the fringe there. It's going to then kick to the left and run down, so I've got a 52 in my hand here. So it's going to take a little bit of magic here to get this one close. No, it's not too bad. Just trying to visualise how that breaks off. A little spot on the green I can see. I'm just seeing this first bounce kicking left. All about trajectory control definitely release one. I'm going to play the ball a bit further back than normal on the back foot just to help me keep it down and landed it just on the green. Landed it or I wanted to, whatever happens happens now. Go on, go, go in then, go in, go in. Oh there we go, we'll take that. All about visualising when you get shots like this. It landed exactly where I was anticipating it too and it kicked down to the left and it's fed down i think that's close so hopefully that's tapping birdie we'll see right so it's moved i mean look how, look how quickly this is after the hole so i'm a delighted with that chip i mean it's the only way for me to get it close was to stun it into the slope there take some speed off and let the brake take it down but you can see how steep after the hole it runs away so i thought it was stone dead i've probably got four and a half five feet here but it is up the hill it is Fairly straight. Yeah, maybe just inside left. Get in, there we go. Right, delighted with that. So that's birded hole three par five so far. Really happy with that chip. Got away with a second little bit, but there we go. It's a it's a birdie. We're back on the par. Right, like with that birdie on the last, back on the par, but really tough par three here. It's 181, pins towards the back. Back down wind though a little bit. I'm gonna hit a seven iron here. Let me see if I get a low one, let it run up. Not a good swing, probably in the left. What was it, carry the bunker? Just in that left bunker, okay. That's fine, we haven't had a bunk shot yet today, well, let's see if we can get that up and down. Okay, so it's rolling, rolled in here, it's, it's pitched there, come down. Not a bit of sand there, brakes left to right. It's gonna be quick down here, so he's gonna feed down. So it's makeable, but I uh, don't need to carry the, uh, the fringe too much, it will run down here. I think there's a decent amount of sand there, so I can do a release two to three bunker shot. 56. This is my bread and butter. Came out as I wanted. Go on, slip, slip, go in then. Ah, really pleased with that one. So, perfect lie. And uh, yeah, just released it, really kept moving around, put it in the holster, nearly went in. It's a shame, but uh, I think we never went up and down. So you see, I must have been so close to going in, right round the edge of the hole there. I like when I release me my putter onto the green. But I just thought there, that's five up and downs I've made in a row there. Um, and you can see I'm one under par, and you can imagine if my short game wasn't that tidy, I'd be four over, just if I didn't go up and down on those last five. So just shows the benefit of 
a good short game. You don't need to be great tee to green. You can still save yourself. You can still shoot really good scores if you work on that short game. So remember, short game is about improving your technique, okay? Work on those three releases, understand that, but really improving how you think, making sure you read the lie. That's what this video is about. Can you become more intelligent golfers? But linking better technique with better thinking, it's an amazing way you can take your short game. And look at me, I'm missing greens, but I'm still one under par, believe it or not. So the 13th, in many people's eyes, this is one of the best golf holes here at Woburn. And I mean, if you just look at it, it's just amazing. It really reminds me a little bit of Augusta, really, with the tall pines and the undulation change. And this hole, really, it's, it's all about your tee shot because it runs out if you hit it too far, hence why I've got three within my hand. It's four, about 407 yards uh, long. So if you hit it too far off the tee, you can get a really awkward downslope lie in the rough. So I'm gonna hit my three with down the right-hand side, anything left you're totally stuffed because you can't see the green from there there's a bit more room right but equally too far right you're also in a bit of a bit of problem but i'm going to hit that down the right hand side of the fairway with the three wood and that should leave me on top with a nice shot into the green Come, on, come back a little bit more. Keep going. Keep coming. Yeah, down the right. Just sit down. Yeah, I think we're fine there. That's just in the rough. I pushed it a little bit, but I, I just hate going left here. I think that's absolutely fine, unless it's got a huge bounce. It's gone to the ferns. I think we're okay. Let's go and check it out. Right, haven't got this one yet. It was absolutely fine. It was inside the tree line, but it hasn't shown its head yet. Oh, no, that's not mine. Here she is. Okay, that's it. So it's obviously got a terrible bounce there. It's really quite firm and sort of rooty down here, and it's just kicked and come down here. A bit unlucky because here I've got an absolutely beautiful shot into the green. Okay, we've got to deal with it. Right, can't really see it. So it could be on the ball. I can't even see the ball actually, and I'm over it. I think that's that. Right, I can't see anything here. I'm just looking at ferns, okay? So I'm, I'm hoping that my club is behind the ball, which it is there. And I just want to hack it out. Hack it out this way. Right, that is behind the ball. I've got to trust it's behind the ball so I can't see a thing. I can't even have a practice backswing because if I do that, I'll lose where my club head is but I'm just going to have to try and hack this out. Anything else, the result, I haven't got a clue where it is. Here we go. This could, this could really be a, a card wrecker. In fact, am I better off just taking a guaranteed drop? I am going to do that. I nearly played that, and that's what most golfers would do. They'd hack at that. I can just imagine me taking a swipe at that and just totally missing the ball. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a penalty shot. I'm going to mark my ball, and I'm going to take two club lengths from here and play it from there so I can guarantee I've got it out and I'm going to go from there because that was just there's no, there's no benefit I could have hacked it out there I might as well take a guarantee drop here so take my two club lengths right so I've taken the drop okay I nearly played it uh, but I thought no just just take the drop I've got one six seven in now pins on the left so I've got a seven iron here I'm just going to hit a smooth seven I'm just straight at it That's pretty good. A little bit right. Yeah, that's quite nice. That's okay. That's 25 feet ish, just right at the pin. Back in play. Outside chance of still making par, but I'm not making double or treble. I've had several swipes at it from that from that terrible line of ferns. So I'm quite happy with that. Actually, a little bit closer than it uh, looked from back there. It's maybe 20 feet, 25 feet. What a view. Look at that view going back up the fairway. Absolutely outstanding. Right, got this for a par. This will be a real save. Right to left. Just going to move that cup from the right. 
uphill. No, there's not enough pace. Okay, that's a drop shot. I felt like I was a bit unlucky there. I hit a nice three wood down the right side. Maybe pushed it about five yards right and it must have got a bad kick into the ferns there. But you've got to take the rough with the smooth. I got a bit of luck on, on 11 when I pushed that uh, approach shot right on the par five and it was still playable. So uh, first bit of bad luck really. Back to level par, great par five to come. So we're on to the 14th par five, really tough par five. And this is not a hole I make many birdies on. If I make a par here, I'm absolutely delighted. Not only is it a really long hole, it sweeps left to right and there's trees all the way down the right, big pine trees. And if you go in those, you're just chipping out. So with that in mind, I'm not hitting a driver here because if I do push the driver, there's also a big dip over the bunker down the right, which, which can take it into the gorse bush. And also it's fairly tight down the left. So what I'm going to do here is use my hybrid, hit that about 210, hopefully. And then there's a, another bunker down there on the left. I'm going to lay up then short of that, leaving me a, a short iron in. So I'm, uh, I'm not chasing this hole. I'm not hitting my driver just because it's a par five. I must hit a driver. I'm just thinking, okay, let's just hit two nice hybrids down there and give myself uh, a positional shot in to the third. So left side of the fairway here with the hybrid. Yeah, and that's absolutely perfect. Down the left side. No danger there of, of missing the fairway. It's down the left side, of, uh, maybe just maybe slight on the rough side there, but it's absolutely fine. Miss right, you've got to avoid going right here. And I've missed that, okay, which is the key. And we're in play. Let's just go find it. Right, so you can see why I didn't hit driver here. If you look at if you get the drone footage on this, you'll see just if I was hitting this another 30, 40 yards, how much that pinches in dip on the right gorses and then the tree on the left there. So I've did the right thing there hitting the hybrid and I'm now going to aim at the left hand bunker as my target bunker. I'm going to make sure I'm using a club that I can't reach. It's 209 to the bunker from here. I could hit my hybrid. I'd like to hit my hybrid, but I could definitely reach it. So I've actually got a six iron. So the golden rule, if you're laying up, you make sure you lay up. And if I do that, I'm going to have a roundabout 130 in if I hit a proper six iron. So we go straight at the bunker. Slight flyer lie, not a problem. I've got plenty of room with this club. Oh dear, push that out to the right. And that is exactly where I didn't want to go in the trees. Not a good swing, bit of a tired swing there. Got underneath it. Oh, it's gone to the right. Okay, let's see if we get lucky. Right, I've got a lie. I've got somewhat of a gap. We're going to go that way. I could, and I'm tempted just to chip it out here. That would be a really easy chip out, and I'm going to have about 100 yards in. But we're going to go for it. For level par, this might be the wrong. This might be the wrong shot choice. The gap, I think, isn't too bad. I mean, the, the pin is just literally a foot or two left of the far tree. The key here is keeping it low enough for long. And if I've got to keep this under about 10 feet high for about 125, 30 yards to get it out and then run it up the green. I've got a five iron. And I'm going to place way back in the stance and just really punch it and see if we can keep it low. If we carry it down past that tree it hopefully will run out there's a crow coming across exactly there that is where that crow is right now would be the perfect landing spot oh that is perfect fit 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 okay carry it a little bit too far love the flight strike uh certainly move the crow there it's landed just on the front of the green got a a bit of a fast kick uh, through the back, but the pin's on the back ledge. So hoping I've got an okay chance of an up and down. I think it's gone a little bit through the green. Let's go and check it out. So from where I was, I'm absolutely delighted. It was always gonna be pretty much uh, run through the green. I had a lot of ball speed on it there, uh, but I'm pleased with it from there. That could have gone really quite badly wrong if it hit a tree. Now, I've got a lie here that's it's quite fluffy grass here. 
And if I hit this like a yard too far, I'm going to have about a 40 foot putt back because there's a tiny little ledge here and the whole thing then goes. So I've got to be really careful about not hitting this too far. It is quick. I'm going to play, it's a bit of an upslope and it's a fluffy light. So I'm going to play a release two here, land it just into where the sunlight is and hope it doesn't then run on too far. It's a tricky light this. Okay. Just on the green. I'm going to break slightly left to right. Came out a little bit softer than I wanted. Uh, it's done all right. Difficult lie because I didn't quite know how much air was underneath. It was it was actually sitting up a little bit and I've hit it a little bit higher off the face than I wanted to. But okay, we've got a seven foot safe par. Right, a little bit of uh, work to do here. Slightly left to right. I love to make this up and down. Just left edge, stay down. Trust the break. Yes, there we go. Right, delighted to get that up and down. Left myself a little bit more than I wanted, but the lie was tricky. Give yourself a little bit of respite if you don't quite get it. Sometimes the lie, you just don't know what's under the ball. Delighted with that shot through the gap there. Hopefully that looks good on camera. Really kind of stung that through there. Just a poor swing with a second. But I've made five. It's a scrappy five, but that's what the game's all about. So 15th hole, 421 yards, par four. It really suits a fade, this one. The fairway sort of moves a little bit left to right, so you can kind of work it with the tree. So I'm just gonna tee this one a little bit lower, just to help me fade it. When you tee it lower, it helps you get a little bit more on top of it. it helps to squeeze it out there and hit more of a fade. The same down that left side, so left of the bunker in the distance. It would be lovely to see it just working back to the right. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. So that's just cutting off, low flight, low bullet fade. Perfect. Right, light with our tee shot, absolutely A1 position. I've got 132 yards. And uh, we're gonna see if we can hit a wedge in there and trap it in there close. Come on, hit a good iron shot. It's online, it's online, be good, be good, sit, yeah, we're all right, we're pin high, just peeled a little bit to the left at the end on the green with the break, but we're pin high there, about 15 feet, good luck for birdie. So pin high, that's what I, I always like with iron shots, if you get them pin high, you've got good distance control, and it just landed there and just broke away, but uh, yeah, it's probably a little bit closer than I said, it's probably about 10, 10 or 12 feet here, good chance here, up the hill, slightly off the left somehow i'm still level par after all the ups and downs i've managed to make today this will this is going to get me under par if i make this with three to go right i've seen it just outside left just double check that at the end hmm, i'm not sure there's that much actually we've got a little bit more on the lip actually i don't think there's quite as much as that first look but let's get it there I pushed it. Not a good stroke. Pushed it. Ah, uh, okay. Let's tap that one in. Okay, steady par. It's fine. Not a good putt. Kind of pushed that one a little bit. Maybe question my read. But we're on to 16. Three really special holes to finish with. So 412 yards here, 16th. Dog leg right to left. I'm not hitting drive here because if I hit this too straight, I'll block it a bit, I will run out. So I'm gonna hit the three wood. I still think the three wood, I've got a good chance of carrying the fairway bunker on the left if I were to pull it, but I'm just gonna aim just right at the, at the uh, sort of radio tower down there at the bottom. Nice little draw would uh, suit the hole. Good, yeah, tried to draw, it's pretty much gone absolutely straight. But because I've hit the three wood, 
don't think it's run out of fairway, so I think I'm okay there. So again, just think about the run outs and when you want to use driver and when you don't want to use driver. So you can see it's run through slightly through the fairway, but I mean, this is real hard pan here. So it's landed on a fairway and just trickled down here. If I had have hit the driver, without doubt, I'm way into the trees here. So I've got just about a clear view of it. I might just go a little bit left of the pin just to make sure I don't catch those branches further down. Uh, 149 was the number. I'm going to hit a 9-iron, which is quite a big 9-iron for me. The pin's at the back of the green. I'm going to play the ball a bit back in the stance because of this lie. It's quite, quite tight. So when I get a lie like this, I really want to put the ball back in the stance so I can sort of drill it a bit more. So that means it, it's probably going to shoot a bit more on the first and second bounce, hence why I'm using a 9-iron. I think it's quite firm. I don't think I can hit it further than what, sort of 150. So just left of the pin, a little bit of a punchy 9. Pretty good. Let's go a little bit. Go a little bit. God, that's a good shot. There we go. That's fine. I think that's pin high, low flight, a little bit of a cut. So I managed to lie well. And I think we're pin high looking for birdie. So it's not quite pin high. Pin's really back, really long green this one. But we've got 25 feet or so. There's a little bit of a mound off the right there. So I think it's going to move right to left. Not a lot, but I need to just favour that right hand side. Downhill at the end, just feel it down there. It'd be lovely to see this one pop in. Go, go. Oh, I just went the other way at the end, actually. Let me misread it at the end there. Okay, foot and a half, tidy up, two feet. There we go. Good four there. I think it was a tee shot that made that hole, didn't hit the driver. We've got two to go on level par. Can I finish level par or even get under? So we're on the 17th now. Fabulous hole this dog leg left to right. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at the sun just setting at the top of the pines as we're losing the light. It's nearly eight o'clock here at the moment and it's been the hottest day of the year. And it's just a lovely temperature. Fantastic being out here. So I've got two holes to go. I'm level par. And sort of feel like I've had to scrap a little bit to get to level par. If you watch the Marquis video where I played the Marquis course and did, uh, did the 18 holes, I feel like that was a little bit easier. Like I played better that day, but I think my short game has been helping me today. Um, but the swing is feeling good. And really, just, just on that, I mean, I had a great lesson with Jake Gilmer, which you can also view as a video on that, where... I was um, really working on some technique and I worked quite hard on that for a while. I really got my ball strike back. I was striking it terribly before that lesson. Um, and I've just reflected on the last few rounds of golf, particularly when I was out there on the Marquis and today. And I'm not really thinking anything other than the shot I'm trying to play in terms of visualizing it. I don't know, maybe, maybe been on video, it's actually helping me get into the mindset of actually trying to see the shot and picture the shot. I'm just focusing purely on my tempo, my timing and really hitting the shot that I'm describing on camera. I'm actually playing pretty well. So just something there for you to consider. Don't think too much goal swing on the course. Really paint the picture of the shot you want to play. Think about your, your speed. And uh, it seems to be working for me anyway. It might work for you. Now, this is a tough, tough hole here because the fairway camber's massively right to left. I have in the past sometimes just hit a hybrid here and sort of hit it down the right, let it go all the way to the left, and then you've got a, a long shot in, but you're actually in play. If I hit a driver straight, I'm going to run out of fairway. I haven't really got the speed and height to carry the tree on the right. So what I'm going to do is a shot that I played really well down 15, that little low bullet fade. So I've teed it low. I'm going to address it a little bit out the heel and just try and squeeze it off the left. If I can do that, it'll be perfect. This is a big tee shot. Here we go. Come on, cut a little bit. It hasn't quite cut. It's gone straight for the tree. And it's kicked left a bit. Okay, so it's left of the tree. Hopefully there's a gap I can squeeze it through. It just didn't cut back. I need to get a bit lucky with this one. Right, okay, pulled it, the bank's taken over here. I've got three trees absolutely plumb right in my way there. There's a tiny gap of about half a yard. I'm not going to go through that one. So I'm going to have to 
hook this. I'm going to do it really low hook. We've got branches hanging down. I've got to hit this at the right edge of the right bunker and I've got to hook it around about 30 yards right to left. The lie is not too bad. In, what is in my favour, I'm not in this sort of lie. If I had this sort of lie, the ball isn't going to move right to left very much. But that's not too bad. I can get the club face on the ball there and hook it. So, worst case, I'm in the bunker. I wouldn't mind that. That would be fine. But it would be nice to hook it and move it onto the green. Uh, Loft-wise, I've gone for a six iron just to help me keep it down and, and chase it up there. So back in the stance for sure. Aim the feet to the right, aim the club to the left. And really stall out the finish and work that right hand over so I can hook it around. Oh, it's perfect. Come on, it's clipped a branch, but I think it's done all right. Go, go. Go on, get on, go. Yeah, we're on the green there. So, got the flight, nearly got it. It just clipped one of the bottom branches there and it on the front of the green. Definitely take that from there. It's about 30 feet up the hill. Um, delighted with that really. I wanna show you something as well while we're here. Now this tree here, it's a beautiful tree. And you see this gap in it? So when Carrie Webb, one here she won there was a women's open championship was played on this course and she was back here and she decided to hit it through that gap rather than going left or right she hit it through that gap under the branches onto the green hold the putt for birdie to win by one so a little bit of history for you there there's a carry web gap right so it's just wriggled on the front edge delighted with that even it clipped the branch but didn't take too much off it uphill 30 feet slightly off the right Let's make sure we get this nice and close if it doesn't drop. Just off the right. Go on, move, go. Oh, I think that was in. A little bit more pace. I think that was in. It was about to start breaking. Okay, tap in four. Take that after the tee shot. And let's go to the last level par. One to go. Let's see what we can do. Right, from the last hole, it's a fabulous finishing hole. It's a 322 yard par four, dog leg to the right, trees on the right, which you can try and carry. But if you go left, you're in a bit of trouble. Now I've got a real decision to make here. I'm either gonna hit sort of a 195 iron up the left, which will leave me about 120 yards in, and that's the safe option, or I can hit the driver and try and take it on. What do I do? I don't shoot many under par rounds. Let's go for the birdie. I'm going to hit the driver. Right, so we're going to tee it down. I'm going to try and hit that low fade, that low bullet fade off the left rather than trying to carry the trees on the right. Okay, I pulled it. One bounce, two bounce. Okay, good news is not in the ferns. Bad news is I shouldn't have done that. I should have hit the five iron, but um, it just stayed straight. Maybe got a bit quick on that one, got a bit excited. Uh, okay, I think, we can, I think we'll be able to find it. It's just whether we've got a gap to the green. Let's see. Right, found it. Not lying great, sitting down quite a lot. I've had a look at it. There is a gap up there. And I'd much rather from this lie here go high, but that gap is so small. So I've got to go low, but the problem is the branches are just really coming over, really growing forward as well. So I've got to hit this low, but you know, if I had, if I had this lie, I'd just be using a little five iron, but I can't get a five iron on this one because of a lie. So I'm going to use a nine iron, back in the stance, hinge, hack down and hope it's coming down before it reaches those branches and it hops on. I'm not sure I can get this on the green, but uh, let's see. Come on, don't want to mess this one up and make a bogey here, so let's concentrate. It's going to go right, it's not going to go near that pin. There's a sign in the background where it says clubhouse, I'm going to aim straight for that clubhouse sign.
Get down. Yeah. Okay, good. Sit, sit, sit. Yeah, we'll take that. It's dribbled through. It's just on the fringe. It just started coming down before the branches, which is why I said get down. I was worried about it going straight in there. Absolutely take that. Good chance of still making the path. So happy with that. It's come through the gap there. We're just run off the green. I am going to put this. I'm not going to chip it. It's only about two feet from the fringe. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this. Uh, so it's really reading this. It's going to move. It's quite quick at the end there. It's down at the end and it's moving right to left quite a lot here. So if I miss this low, it's really going to go. So I want to get it up the high side. I've got a little spot down there I can see. I want to run the ball over, which is up here. Just up there. So we get this stone dead. Run it over my spot. Go on, go on, slope. Take it, take it, take it. Go. Yeah, pretty good. Happy with that. I was worried about it taking off. That's why it's just come up a. I've got two. So I've got a little bit, little bit of work here. Two and a half feet, and a bit of break. Let's just knock it straight in. Don't think too much about it. Right edge. Oh, nearly, nearly escaped, but I've made it, made the par, got around a level par, absolutely delighted with that. So listen, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it gave you a good opportunity, first to see the Dukes course in all its glory, amazing light, and just been a beautiful evening here, but also how I play golf. I mean, I felt like it was a bit of a scrap there. I feel like I hit quite a few loose shots, but I've still somehow got it round in level par because I got a number of up and downs there. I'm not sure what my stats are, but I think I've got most most of Miss Green's up and down there and still managed to walk away with level pie. It just shows the importance of short game. If you can just work on your technique, but really work on the mental side. And I'm hoping watching this video will have given you that understanding of what shot to play where and what club and the importance of the lie. So hopefully you took a lot from it and see you next time.